based on our engineers, architects, and material scientists' report um, to either repair this within the next couple of years or repair something larger. Some of that brick wall, that brick backup, and that stone wall, you, know, you can see daylight when we get up to the top level. Right. Take it down. Right. Frankly, it would cost more to just take it down than to repair it. Significantly more to rebuild something than to just repair it now. So. With that, maybe we should go up and see some daylight. <laughs> <laughs> Just beyond this wall is the roof of the church. It's starting to push this wall into the church. So we're kind of at a critical point. So this wall could potentially fall onto the church? Eventually. We're, we've been told we're not at risk of that happening immediately, but sure, that would be the eventual condition. So this doesn't move, but as the wall around it moves, it starts to pull it apart. Some is attached to the wall, some ends up just detaching from the wall and is bearing onto pieces below it. And so we're at the point now where if we repair this within the next year or two, we can keep these limestone traceries in place and repair the wall around it and structurally stabilize we want to keep. We want to get it watertight, mm -hmm. structurally stable, and um, and not have to replace these full stone elements because this would be really a, an increase to the, to, the, to the cost. So, with all of this movement over time, um, it's fractured the brick wall, and so this is some of the some of what needs to be repaired. Some some brick will need to be fully replaced, and some will will just have grouting. This side over here, you can see some good cracking that will oh need my. a lot of uh, structural repair. Above that is the parapet, and you can see that it, it there's not a straight line anymore. The kind of the center of it is caving in, uh, and the, the corners are are being kept intact a little bit more because they're braced by a corner condition, whereas the center of it is, is starting to cave in and tip into the bell tower itself. And then if you look up at the stone cross, that started to tip into the church. And so at some point that could fall right in onto the roof of the church, fall in, do, do a lot of damage, and, and then restore it, uh, basically structurally support it back on that on that wall positive drainage that happens um, over this wall I mean if that's really it just do that we know we need to do that because that's a problem Daycare wants to expand into the undercroft of the church with some toddlers, and apparently Robin can take as much space as we can give her with our income stream for us. And we also feel that it's our responsibility to um, extend ourselves to the community. And I understand that there is not a daycare near here, hmm. not for a long way, so hmm. between southwest Minneapolis and downtown, we are it. In order to convert the undercroft to work for her, uh, you know, three bathroom stalls and a, and a sink in a kitchen, those are her only requirements. We have more requirements than that ourselves, like adult meeting space, that sort of thing, and our Sunday school rooms. We want to address the, um, any kind of moisture issues that we're having there because we have people who can't be in the undercroft because of our um, air quality there. And it is more about the quality of life in the undercroft of the church where we send our children every Sunday and where we as adults could be doing much more. We could also open that up to the community mm -hmm. more, which is one of our missions. Egress windows, do we need two doors out of every classroom? These are the mm -hmm. things that um, we're hoping a consultant can help us with. And all three of the firms that we interviewed are, are very familiar with these challenges that we have to throw out to them because they've all done churches they all have this multi-use space that they've dealt with in every project they've done, so they're all quite well versed in that.
Is we need to repair this access to the chapel. Our idea was is that in the process of rebuilding this, do we want to rethink how this north side of the building is used? And our idea is to actually excavate the hill away from the side of the building so that the basement level is on grade with the sidewalk. And so you would actually theoretically be able to walk up 42nd Street and walk right into the building. And that would likely be a new daycare entrance. So today, the parents who drop their kids off at the daycare are faced with the traffic in the morning on Sheridan Avenue, trying to figure out if they can open their door up without getting clipped. And then just being concerned about their kids because they're unloading little, you know, five years and under kids and they all, they probably all have stories to tell that, mm -hmm. uh, that it was dangerous. This would be so much better if they could figure out how to unload here and come directly into the daycare facility, which would then, would, would at that point be occupying this level underneath as well as the current space that they have under the parish hall. So this gives you a little bit of an idea here about what we're talking about as far as the level goes, but that grade right there is pretty much sidewalk grade. So we, our undercroft is really up to code as far as exits go. It just needs bathrooms and it needs another sink and a kitchen and it needs a fire suppression. This would be a lovely way to transform the lower level into a space that everybody would enjoy.